Hello there, I'm Maria from the Rich and Simple Living. It's Tuesday, so normally I've been doing a homeschool video with Sean, picking out one of her subjects and um, filming it. But today she's not schooling because it's half term. I know not every homeschooler uh, follows school holidays, but because Sean went to school and made friends, we've um, been following the holidays even though she's homeschooling because well when it's not locked down that is she'll have the opportunity to meet up with her friends from school and do things in the school holidays so I thought it was important that she had her holidays like they did so I've not got a lesson to show you today but what I'm going to do is um, just go through something that she did last week because today in England is what we call pancake day so happy pancake day everyone hope you get lots of them tonight i've just done three and a half pints of batter mix and put it in the fridge ready for pancake day pancake day it is pancake day ready for tea time so yes um i don't know if other countries um celebrate pancake day. i think there are but it's in different format um so on friday when we did our english lesson sean did do an essay on pancake day so i'll just brief you on what that says um i asked her what pancake day was and so she said pancake day is always on shrove tuesday it's a day before ash wednesday and it's observed in many christian countries um it's through participating in confession and absolution the ritual burning of the previous year's holy week palms arms palms Palm, sorry, finalising one's Lent and sacrifice, as well as eating pancakes and other sweets. I think that was a favourite bit at the end. <laughs> um, I asked her what the origins was, and she said it was a traditional feast before the start of Lent on Ash Wednesday. Um, Lent of 40 days leading up to Easter, which was traditionally a time of fasting. And on Shrove Tuesday, Anglo-Saxon Christians went to confession and were shriven, or and she's put in brackets absolved from their sins so i was asking her these questions i dotted the questions on a bit of paper and she was then googling and looking up for her own answers um another thing that obviously we found why did they make pancakes on um show tuesday was because they had to use up all of their butter eggs sugar and things like that because they were the things they were giving up for lent so they had to use them and a good way of using them was by making pancakes. So it seems to be the tradition that carried on, and which is what we do today. Um, I asked her what other countries celebrate Pancake Day and she researched and said um, it's a special day celebrated in many countries around the world. It's celebrated in English speaking countries like the UK, Ireland, Australia and Canada. In France, the USA and other countries it is called Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday. So maybe some of you are from them countries and are celebrating those things today. I don't know. I'd be interested. Put in the comments down below what you are celebrating today, if you are celebrating it. Um, I asked her about pancake racing and flipping the pancakes as they were racing. And she said it happens all over England throughout Shrove Tuesday. The tradition is thought to have originated in Olney in the 15th century after a woman lost track of time while cooking pancakes. When the bells for mass rang, she ran out of her house with the pan and pancakes still in her hand. <laughs> but apparently that's where the tradition began. And I know another tradition, um, Sean didn't write that. We thought about it afterwards because we don't live a million miles away from a place where they do it. If she's in Ashbourne, they do pancakes. Um, like Shrove Tuesday football match and it's quite wild apparently I've seen pictures of it I've seen it on the news and I've seen pictures and so we've never been up there to watch it or anything because the uh, fear for my life too much for that <laughs> it looks really wild and manic so uh, I don't suppose they'll be doing it though this year because obviously the situation but that's an annual event on Pancake Day like a Shrove Tuesday football match so yeah, that's what she's doing. I thought I'd give you a look at her writing there because I was a bit concerned when she was at school, her writing was really nice. 
and it was coming on great and she got what's called a pen license because they write in pencil and when they think that the writing is really good they get this little card like a size of a bank card thing and it's their pen license and they're allowed to write in pen from then onwards although at home she doesn't choose to she she likes writing in pencil but yeah she she wrote really nice since we've been homeschooling, I've noticed the writing had gone a bit scrawly, like she's rushing and it didn't matter and that. And I commented it on a couple of times. And then she wrote an essay, give her a nice book. Well, it was this book and we wrote an essay. And I said, you know, your writing's looking a bit better. I don't know whether it's because she got a nice book that felt a bit like a school book to her, I don't know. But I said, your writing's looking a lot nicer. And since I've said that, she's making more of a conscious effort to write nice again so I just thought I'd just show you a writing I mean what do you think I think um, it's looking quite neat and nice and she's also where she's quoting words and putting things in brackets she's actually um, like there where she's quoted words she's put it in the um, speech marks um, so I'm quite pleased with that so that's what she did on Friday because it is pancake day today but also, what I was going to tell you about, um, another thing we're doing essay-wise, I'll just flip back a few pages in the book to find it. Uh, can't be far away, because we use this book for our English as well, as well as doing essays. Um, I thought of something else, because as you know, we're mad on history, and also I love researching my family tree. Um, we love the family history. Like I always say, history begins with yourself and search outwards from there. And I thought, what a great idea to do if we took, not myself, I said, don't start at me, because obviously she knows a lot about me. And although I've lived through, obviously, historic times, we all do. But I said, start at your gran, my mum we started at. And what we're going to do is, like, in her lifespan, we're going to write... Um, a piece find something that happened famous in her lifetime and uh, and also like the year she was born find something that happened that year as well and we're going to do it go out and out so we'll pick the next grandparent up then which will be that's her granny it'll be her great granny my granny because I mean it doesn't matter which side of the family we follow because the more or less the same age more or less all of them born like within a couple of years of each other and so um the same sort of things would have happened worldwide but i thought i'll read you the essay that she's done uh a couple of weeks well it was a couple of weeks ago it was the first of february we decided to do it and she's titled it entitled it <laughs> what happened in my granny's time in from 1941 to 2015 well she chose to do the fold explosion um around here we call it when the dump went up the, the dump um, the dump explosion but i don't know if any of you have heard it um i know some of you live reasonably close um, but others of you live a lot further away so I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it but uh, I'll, t I'll read what she's wrote first and if I think she's missed that explain I'll tell you what it is then so the Ford explosion the Ford disaster happened on the 27th of November 1944. The RAF Ford explosion was a military accident which occurred at 11 minutes past 11 a.m. on Monday at the RAF Ford underground munitions storage depot in Staffordshire, England. It was one of the largest non-nuclear explosions in history and the largest on UK soil. There was 189 Italian prisoners working in the mines during the accident. 26 were killed or missing at the RAF dump with civilian workers and Italian prisoners of war. 37 were killed, drowned and missing. Um, she hasn't wrote him, but the reason it drowned is because when the dump went up, it took out a local reservoir as well and the water just spewed everywhere and swallowed everything up, basically. In 1990, it was announced that there should be a memorial stone for the ones who died. The stone used was donated by the Italian government and flown to the United Kingdom on an R 
on an RAF plane. This explosion was classed as the fourth biggest explosion in the world. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, New Mexico testings and the Ford explosion. At this point of time, the Allies would have been preparing for the D-Day landings in Normandy, France. The explosion covered 12 acres. Most people thought that the Germans were attacking and hid under tables. Just before this explosion on the 14th of April 1944, there was an explosion in Bombay, India. The cause of it was fire and the explosions hit Bombay, British Raj and Victoria Dock. Now she does a quote from her granny. She says, my granny was three and a half years old at the time of the explosion. She said her mum thought that they were being bombed by the Germans and she grabbed my granny and hid under the large oak kitchen table. My granny said there were huge boulders flying through the air and the walls of the house went in and out like a concertina. No one, oh sorry, she changed pencils in, it's gone a bit lighter. No one is something sure. I think it might be exactly, I'm not actually sure what that says. No one is exactly sure what happened to start the explosion. The cause of the disaster was not known at the time. There had been staff shortages, a management position had been empty for a year and 189 inexperienced Italian prisoners of war were working in the mine at that time. Until 1974, they announced that the explosion was probably a site worker removing a detonator from a live bomb using a brass chisel rather than a wooden baton. Eyewitnesses said that they had seen workers doing this. Only a quarter of the bombs and munitions went up. The other three quarters are still underground but closed off and buried. So, yeah, a pencil went a bit light, so that excuse me. See what I mean? <laughs> she got a nice dark pencil and she changed pencil and with the light, it's a bit hard to see. Still don't know what that word says. But yeah, um, I thought that was really good because it's something that happened in the granny's time, although my mum was only three and a half, but also it happened in a great grandmother's time, but we'll find something else that happened for that as well. Uh, but... Uh, my granddad, he was away at war at the time in World War II. He was actually in India. And my mum was, like I say, three and a half. And my granny's older two children, well, older three, one was working anyway. The older two were in school. And I remember them saying, like, um, they thought it was Germans bombing because it was supposed to be secret having this RAF ammunition site, munitions factory, deep underground in the mines in Fold. Well, the mines today, for anybody who doesn't know, the mines today, it's gypsum mines. Um, it's been mined since Roman times. Um, they mine gypsum there, but they used it for storage during World War II for the munitions for um, the armed forces. <laughs> So yeah, they thought Germans had come and attacked it to blow it up. But it turned out, like Sean had written, that they think it was somebody who was chiselling the top out and they used a brass chisel rather than a wooden one. Uh, it all seemed very inexperienced there and a bit mishmoshy. But... Uh, yeah, so that happened on the one. There's lots of stories about it. There's books, you can buy books on Amazon about it. Um, it's very interesting. They lost the village pub. They lost a whole farm at the top of the hill where my mum lived. They lost a whole farm. It just swallowed it up all, workers and all. Um, my mum told me about a story about a cow in a field and it was blown up like a balloon and the vets went to put it out its misery but it was already dead anyway it was just filled with little gas and stuff like that so yeah it was a massive explosion today there's a big crater there well today since it happened there's been a massive crater in the ground now it's overgrown with trees and everything and it is fenced off because it is dangerous people try to go down the mines try to find the old openings and pictures have been taken of things and 
like I say, there's books on Amazon you can buy with the pictures in it. But they're not supposed to go down there. They're not. It's um, no entry because it is very dangerous. Because like Sean had written, um, only a quarter of those uh, bombs and things went off. The other three quarters are still under there and still live. And there have been warnings about it for many years after that. I can remember when I used to visit my grandparents, um, used to go up to the top of the hill because they lived in a village. Well, my, my mom, grandparents lived out in the countryside actually, but the nearest village overlooked Fold, it was at the top of the hill and looked down on Fold. And uh, I can remember when we used to walk up to the village that there were signs at the top of the roads warning road liable to subsidence. And for many years I was there. In fact, it was only a few years ago, I suddenly thought, what happened to them signs? Because they'd been there that long. I only realised a couple of years ago they weren't there no more. Whether they've decided it's safe, I don't know, but I wouldn't put my money on that. <laughs> not at all. I remember, I'm not sure if it was last year or the year before, and there were some loud explosions coming from across that way. Uh, we're in a neighbouring village from there, we're not far. And we heard loud explosions and other people closer in the nearest villages heard really loud explosions and oh, the fire brigade went rushing out, somebody called 999, there was police, those fire brigades are calling everywhere off. But I think it turned out to be something to do with a farmer was doing something. But that's the fear that the dump will still go up again, that, you know, the war is still there. So, yeah. But I mean, that was but 1944, I think it was, when that went up, wasn't it? 1944, I think it was. Yes, November 1944. But like I say, the war is still there. But some mad fool near that area built a firework factory. I'm not sure if it's still there, but what a mad idea was that? But yeah, they still work down the mines in gypsum. It's an ongoing um, business, never closed down, still, still mining. Uh, gypsum down there um it's just you know what if what if it's interesting but it's sad at the same time you know so because a lot of people people we know families we know um their relatives didn't survive it we live alongside families who's got family that didn't survive that blast and a lot of people, the bodies weren't even found because they couldn't get under there. It wasn't safe enough. So to this day, they're still buried under there. The whole farm's under there. The workers under there. No, it was a terrible explosion. Terrible. So yeah. Oh, and I've gone off track well and truly telling you the history of that. But yeah, but like I say, um, doing it doing her essay it's like English and history combined but I thought what a great way to do it by taking a relative and it brings their things that happen in their time and them to life I think it's really good really interesting uh, and a thing of note um, what happened in the actual year that my mum was born her granny 1941 December the bombing of Pearl Harbor so that's um, what she'd written so yeah, that's what she did uh, last week. And well, she didn't do this one last week. It was a week before she did that one. It was Pancake Day one she did last week. But this was the week before. But I just thought it might be interesting to tell you. And I just thought it's quite a good idea. We came up with thinking about it, thinking about our family history, our family tree, because I research it so much. And I just thought it would be really good if we took each of our ancestors from each generation. So next time we're going to work on a um, great grandparents. Confusing me because of course they're my grandparents and her great grandparents. So we're going to pick one of them out next time and see what happened within the time frame of their lifetime and also what happened the year they were born. Uh, I know she branded a few ideas about the Titanic about because she likes that. So whether she'll write about that or find something else, I don't know. So that's that. So, yes, I say a lot of so's, don't I? 
<laughs> I'm not bottling my words out, I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, there's one thing I wanted to um, do for a certain person, uh, a certain young man, my grandson. Hello, Jaden. How are you? <laughs> I promised him when uh, I come on again that I would say hello to him because he's not been able to see me in lockdown. I don't see him or anything. He watches all of my videos so he can see us and what we're doing. And then the other night he was on, uh, I'm not sure if it was WhatsApp or something, where you can see each other and talk. And I spoke to him and he was telling me that he watches me all the time. So I said, when I'm on next, I'm going to say a big hello to you. So hello, Jaden. Can't wait till you're back here again. So, and if he's allowed to be filmed, perhaps you'll all see him when all this is over. Hopefully you might see all of them. I was only looking at a video I'd done the other day, a known one for personal use, not for going on here. What it was done a couple of years ago when we were having an Easter egg hunt and I was watching all the kids running around thinking how much they've grown in a couple of years and they're running around looking for Easter eggs and the, my older kids and their wives, partners and that there and focusing on everyone and I was thinking, Seems such a long time ago since we had those days where we had the family parties. Because when I started um, vlogging, it was like I was going to have the whole family in eventually. I was going to start myself and then tell them what I was doing and have everybody on it. And so you could see, you know, just one big family doing lots of family stuff. And we've got this home schooling journey and we've got the journey outside um, turning our... Uh, back garden into like a little mini homestead teeny tiny farm it gets called all sorts but uh, the two journeys and as well as family life thrown in with it so you could see us all what we're all about so it feels like I'm not giving you much content at the moment because I can't sort of show you what we're all about you're only seeing me and Sean occasionally Dean very occasionally Lisa I'm not sure if you have I think she's been on um, but you're not seeing all of us so I'm going to put everybody on soon so and hopefully you'll see Jade and you'll see what I've just said hello to so yes I hope you're behaving Jade and I was going to say I hope you're doing your schoolwork but I've forgotten didn't I? it's half term so I bet you're on your game system playing <laughs> he's always on that <laughs> So yeah, that's all anyway for this week. Otherwise, I'm just going to ramble on um, for this week, for today, sorry. Normally, Thursday we'd have our homeschool cooking, but we're not going to be doing it this week because it's half term. So hopefully next week we'll go back to that. So Thursday, I'll perhaps come on and uh, have a little chat with you. Let's find something to have a chat about on Thursday. Might be about something to do with schooling. Might be something to do with home life. Might be a bit of all sorts. Um, Friday will be back outside again, weather permitting. But what I want to do Friday, because last Friday I gave you a tour of the garden and how it's looking now. And like I say, it's going to take a lot of imagination to imagine how it's going to look in summer. But how it looks now. So you've seen all that. The state it's all in at the moment. Nothing started yet, no seeds planted or nothing yet. I don't do that in February. Um, the earliest I'll start is sort of mid-March onwards. So what you've seen is how it all is at the moment. So I'm going. To, what I'm going to do on Friday, I know you've seen the animals before, I've shared them you before, but I'm going to go and talk about each of them, what I want to do with them, and tell you a bit about each of them and my plans there so we'll go out and we'll see them on friday if it's not raining although they are under cover um most of them the ducks aren't so much under cover now but we'll say we'll, i'm sure we'll find a dry five minutes <laughs> although nothing with me is as short as five minutes so yeah we'll do that on friday but before that thursday i'll pop on and we'll have a chat about something I don't like about anything really so if there's anything you want to ask me about anything just drop a few questions below and we'll talk about that just anything really 
So yeah, so I hope you all have a good day and if you're having pancakes tonight, enjoy them. <laughs> and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye.